and welcome to episode four of the Serial Sewist and Knitter. This mini episode will be about my finished objects and my whips. So you may have seen the uh, other mini episode, which was everything to do with acquisitions. So if you haven't seen that yet, feel free to go and check it out. I have split up the segments for this episode because it is a long one. And sometimes it's just nice to dive in and out of mini episodes. So that's what I've done for this, this episode at least. If you guys like it, I will continue to do it. So if you are a new viewer, welcome. If you're a returning viewer, thank you for coming back. I really appreciate it. Uh, I'm going to jump right into it. So finished objects. I'm wearing one. Uh, this was a test knit for uh, your, uh, no, Calibri by Johanna. Um, she's a knitwear designer based out of Germany and it was, it was a really nice test knit. The group was really nice. The chatter in the group was really nice. The designer is lovely. And I used the recommended yarn, which was the Ficolana Tilia and Arueta. And I've used natural white for the stripes. And this was, um, I want to say like a creme brulee held with a light truffle because it's mohair held with fingering and same for the contrast. So it's, it's, you're working, you're working the pattern, holding the yarn double and you then crochet vertical stripes in. It is a really nice pattern. It blocked really well. So when I finished, when this came off the needles, it was quite cropped, like quite cropped, like above belly button. And now it skims over a bit longer, actually, the belt loops of my pants. So it's, it, it's really nice and it's light, but it's also warm and it, I've got it next to skin at the moment. So I'm not wearing any singlet or anything and it's not itchy. Um, I, a few mods. So I knit a medium sized sleeve on a small size body because I wanted an oversized sleeve and I made it a bit longer than the pattern recommended. And I also lined up the stripes a bit differently. So I think you can see, like I lined up the stripes with the horizontal stripes. So the vertical stripes on the arm are lining up to the horizontal stripes on the body. I don't know why, just symmetry. I really like that I can tuck my hands in. It's got an eye cord um, neck and cuff and um, bind off on the body as well. So really delightful knit. Would love to test knit for her again. It was a joy. And because one test knit is not enough, I am doing another one at the moment, which is for Samba Knits. So Beatrice is running a um, test knit for a V-necked crop sweater with a balloon sleeve. I'll talk a little bit about that after I've finished talking to you about my finished objects. And um, it's really nice. It's good. It's good. It's good. It's nice to, to connect with other knitters who are also like South American. Um, so Beatrice is originally from Brazil, but she lives in Chile now. So we've connected on that level as well because my background is from Chile as well. So that's been nice. So finished object, this, the other finished object, and I will put in a photo so that you can see is the agave skirt by Dirando. So I have finally finished that. It is a great pattern. Um, it is very polished when you finish it up. There is a lot of hand sewing on the inside, uh, especially if you're not making the reversible version of the pattern. The one observation I have is that the sloping of the sizes are quite small. So I purchased that pattern back when my waist would have been around 94, 95 centimeters. And I had intended on sewing the biggest size in the pattern that I have at the moment. Now I have a, it, 
fluctuates between like 78, 17, 28 to 80 centimeter, let's say 80 centimeter waist now. And I made a size 44 of that pattern and it fits me now. So there was no way that was going to fit me with a 94 to 95 centimeter waist. Um, they have expanded their sizes now, but I just wanted to call that out uh, that it's definitely 12, 12 anything from them because their sloping in sizes is quite different to some of the Australian and other European and American pattern designers for sewing patterns. So to avoid disappointment, just definitely look at the finished garment measurements, but also just keep in mind that they run small, um, which is not okay, but uh, like you'd rather know than not know. Um, so I did finish that, very pleased with it, yet to wear it to work. Um, but I'm very excited too. Very excited to have like a full me made outfit to wear. The next finished object that I have, which is, you would have seen a reel on my Instagram and I forgot to take a photo of it, was the flying solo cowl. So I knit my mom a cowl because she works late nights supervising um, off sites. Um, and yeah, it's, it's been really cold here and she got a bit of a chest infection. So I started to get a bit worried about her not rugging up properly. So I made her a fly, the flying solo cow, which is a free pattern by, I think it's Scott, just Scott. I'll put it below. And I used some yarn from Skip Rope Yarns that I had purchased last year before she went on her hiatus. So it was like a purple, um, a lavender color and I also used up some stash yarn which I think was Manos de Uruguay and it was a light fingering and it was just variegated between like lavender and peaches and pinks so it looks really really nice because you end up starting with uh, holding the fingering yarn double and then you drop one from the same color so you start with say dark purple I was holding that double then I dropped one and picked up the lavender and that gave it like a mild effect and then you drop the second dark purple and pick up the second lavender so that gives you a solid band and then again you drop one of the lavender to transition to the lighter color so it's like a fade but not really like a fade it's more like a mild effect it's very pretty. I am hoping to make another one. You may have heard my dog. He's barking at the moment. So those are my finished objects. I had a finished object, which has now become a work in progress again. I'm just picking it up now. So this vanilla raglan in brushed fleece has become the bane of my existence. I finished this this week. I blocked it. And when my partner tried it on, the body was perfect. The length was great. It was just what he wanted. The feel against the skin was great. And then when he showed me the sleeves after blocking, it was like, like there were no hands. They were gone. And I had... You know, I had run out of yarn and I had gotten the wrong brushed fleece from like a couple of years ago. So it was produced a couple of years ago. And then the new batch that I got felt a bit thinner and different. So I was worried about that. And as I was knitting, I could see that like it was less dense. Point is, I ended up finishing it, blocking it, and then completely ripping the arms back and starting again. So you can see that one I have stitches on hold here and I am on this sleeve so a few things that I didn't disclose on Instagram which I'm going to talk about here is owning your mistakes <laughs> what I mean by owning your mistakes is when you make a decision about your knitting you have to be accountable and this the decision that I made with this was
When I picked up for the sleeves, I was meant to pick up a total of 72 stitches when I first did the sleeves. 72 stitches, okay, great. Picked up my stitches, ended up picking up like 83. I went 11-ish stitches off. That's not really that bad. I'll just go with it. Don't go with it. If it tells you a specific stitch count to pick up, you pick up that stitch count. Only increase it when you know exactly how many you can increase by without it throwing it completely off. So what ended up happening is that I had worked out the number of decreases correctly, parallel, but because there were so many more stitches, it became so much more wider and longer, which is why the sleeves were so enormous. So let my mistakes not be your mistakes, please, because otherwise you will face this frustration too. So I knew what I did wrong and I knew what I had to do to fix it. So I ripped back and started again. And now this time I'm also going to just knit the sleeves in the new batch of the Rowan brushed fleece and not use the old batch. So that at the very least the body is in the old production batch, but the sleeves will be even in the new batch, which is kind of like, almost like a bitonal raglan, but nothing to do with color and everything to do with actual fiber composition and how it was produced. So this is my work in progress at the moment. When I get frustrated with it, I switch to my test knit. So because I was having the health issues, I had to take some time off work just to recover before I could go back into like complex abstract thinking, which is part of my day job. Which meant I could cast on for my test knit for Beatrice. Um, I'm not gonna show the pattern because it's not public knowledge yet and it's still being tested, but I do have like the hashtag on my grid and I've shown photos of the whip because we're allowed to share photos of it on social media. So there's nothing wrong with me showing you what it's looking like now, um, but I'm not gonna flash the photo of the image because then it can be a surprise. So it is coming along really nicely. I did a lot of knitting, surprisingly a lot of knitting while you know, recovering from surgery. Um, more so here at home in hospital, you just want to sleep really. Sleep and watch YouTubes. So here is how this is going. And you can see the V-neck. The thing that I really love about this pattern is that you have the option of bust darts. I don't know if you can see them, but it's really, really nice to have a nice bust dart. So there's meant to be negative ease on this, which it does have, I have tried it on and it sits really nicely. It's meant to be crop, like crop, crop, but we're allowed to alter the length. So I'm knitting it to a length of 22 centimeters of the body from the underarm cast, the underarm edge. And then there's going to be like four centimeters of ribbing. I am contemplating doing like a longer ribbing and maybe playing with that proportion a little bit so that it's a bit cinched in at the waist given that it's gonna have like semi balloon sleeves, but we'll see. The wool I am loving, it is a non superwash wool. Um, in the colorway Wombat. Why am I loving it? Because I'm totally biased, because it is going to be one of the colors that are going to be included in the upcoming release for the Moodle, Moody Neutrals for my Shop Colorways Collective. So this is the colorway Wombat that was dyed especially for the shop by Knit or Dye. And it is the only superwash, she's the only super, non superwash dyer um, that I was able to get for this collection this time around. And so I'm really, really pleased with this. It is really nice and soft to knit with. Um, and it's a good kind of toothy. So what I mean by that is I, 
if I've missed a stitch or dropped a stitch, it actually hasn't slid through the whole project. Uh, it just stays put so I can just pick it back up again. So I'm very excited to have like a non superwash um, jumper. And I'm really, really, really happy that I've been able to, to just support another Aussie dyer in that way. And yeah. I like the color. I've been looking for a color like this for ages and they're not easy to find. So very, very, very pleased with this. I'm going to keep it here. Test is coming along nicely. I think the deadline might be around August. August. Let's say August. So I have time. I and I wanted to get as far along as I could for it. So that's good. Just moving some stuff around. The other thing that I've still got going, so I've shown you before, last time I showed you my Gresham wrap, that hasn't really advanced much since the last time. But what has advanced a little bit is my No Frills uh, Petite Knit that I'm knitting in the Fibersmith Raspberry Sorbet colorways. So, I have rouge sleeve separation. You can see the beautiful difference in the color here. Oh, it looks really nice in this light. Um, so this is going really well. I have the body to do. So every now and then I'll switch between the three projects, but I really need to finish Nick's jumper, my partner's jumper. These are my whips. This is what's getting the most love at the moment. Uh, I still have my sock that I need to finish. I still have the Gresham wrap that I need to finish. And I've got a few FOs there, uh, not FOs, UFOs, which are just not getting any attention at the moment. And it's not because I don't love them. It's because I love these more right now. The other whip that I have, and I mean like cut out ready to sew, is the Milton Peppermint Dress. It is a free pattern by Peppermint Magazine. Um, look up the hashtag on Instagram. So if you're vaguely curious about sewing, it is a, it's a really, easy construction that looks incredibly polished. And I've got the pattern pieces cut out, ready to sew up in this khaki olive green. So I saw someone have it made up in this beautiful chocolate brown and it was like a really heavy linen. I don't have much brown in my wardrobe, but I do love me some green. And look, like it goes with gray. It'll go with this. Like it'll go with this. So this green is a great base for me. So I need to finish making that. Hopefully that'll be done by the next episode. I try and take my time with my sewing patterns lately rather than rush them. Um, so we'll see. So that's for all my whips at the moment. I did apply for a second test knit uh, and what ended up happening was because I've test knit for them before they wanted to give the opportunity to someone else, which was totally fine. I respect that. I still love their all their patterns and all their work and I will most definitely be buying this pattern when it is published. I have the mohair ready for it. Um, yeah. It's going to be a good one. So if you're like vaguely interested in the test knit and who I'm talking about, I would suggest following along with Craya Bayer. Craya Bayer is doing the test knit for Rose, which is this beautiful wrap cardigan. Um, so I know I'm vicariously going to be living through that test knit and like watching the release date for the pattern like a hawk because it just, it's really, really like dainty and delicate and feminine. 
And it's the perfect thing to have ready for, for spring, really. Um, so that is all my finished objects, work in progress. I have a couple of planned projects. So aside from the peppermint pinafore, in terms of sewing, I forgot to mention, I also finished a pair of Avalon pants like the night before I had to go to hospital. Um, great pattern, they're by Jasuti. Sew up really quickly, incredibly comfortable pair of pants and they don't look like you're wearing trackies at all. They've been cut like a wide leg. Um, it's a, like a high-waisted wide leg, but it skims along the side of your body straight down. So it almost looks like a tailored pant, but you're wearing trackies. You're legitimately wearing tra trackies. The only downfall is that it doesn't have pockets because there's no side seam on the pants. They, they run on the inside. So you'd, you'd probably hack it and put like a, it was like a patch pocket on the front if you wanted to. They're very, very, very comfortable. Highly recommend the pattern. And I think it goes up to size 18 or 20. I'm pretty sure it goes up to size 18 or 20. Um, but you could always adjust the width of the elastic that you put in the waistband because you're cutting them so wide if you needed a bit more room. So always keep that in mind with elasticated waistband pants. Planned projects. I've mentioned the Louvre sweater in my acquisitions video vaguely when I was talking about this color. This is still very much something that I want to make. Ideally before winter is out, we shall see. Because I have unspun staring at me now that is waiting to be whipped up into something like a tulip. So the tulip sweater is something that I definitely want to make in unspun. I have leftover mohair from uh, Ficolana from this test knit, but this is a bit too dark for it. So if I paired it with this white, this white, it might give it too much of a mold effect. So I have some lighter unspun making its way to me from Julia from Wool and Twine, which I might see how that looks. I'll do a little swatch and then try and knit up a tulip sweater in the unspun as the pattern was intended. Um, I did mention vaguely that I want to make myself a flying solo cowl. I have wool that will... <laughs> I have more wool that I bought this week from Chloe from Woolen Works, of course. That will be making its way to me as well. So I put I snapped up some of her like oopsie skeins for the I think it was the Kingfisher, the Kingfisher bird colorway that she's released because it looked really cool and really grungy. And so instead of getting it in fingering weight, I've gotten it in like DK weight. So I don't need to hold the yarn double. I can just knit it up in one go, basically. So I'm very keen to, to give that a go and see how that looks. And in terms of other planned projects, I have been flirting with the idea of like a textured sweater. Not necessarily a love note uh, by Tikan Knits, but maybe I've got the Magnolia Bloom pattern. I've got the White Horse pattern as well. Um, I really want to knit up something by Sari Norland. I guess I'm just a bit, bit of a scaredy cat when it comes to those complex yokes, but I really want one. So I'm just going to have to like bite the bullet essentially and just give it a go. But the same with the color work. So we'll see. Um, I'm just thinking about whether or not I've got anything else that I've got planned. I've been flirting with the idea of making my niece a dress, but I feel like if I commit to it, I might change my mind. So I don't know. I think I like the idea of making her a dress because like tiny human knitwear comes together so quickly, like 
so quickly. You have no idea. And it's one of my favorite things to, to make because it comes together so quickly. So, anyway. Thank you for hearing me rant and ramble about my finished objects, my finished object that became a whip again, it's time traveled, my other whips, my test knits, my planned projects so far. I really appreciate you sticking around to, to have a listen to what I've got in the works. If there's anything here that you've got questions about, feel free to let me know. I'm always happy to answer questions on Instagram or in the comments. And yeah, I can answer them as best I can. Even if they're sewing related, I'm always happy to have a chat. Um, and yeah, so thank you for watching. I really appreciate it. And thank you for watching. I really appreciate it. And hopefully there was something in here you found helpful. And I will chat to you next time about all my making goodness. So if you haven't seen the other episode for this, or well, the other mini episode for this episode, go check it out. It's where I talk you through all the acquisitions that I've gotten this month and some of the life stuff. And let me know if you like the format. If you don't, let me know. And we will work something out. I just wanted to give you something bite-sized so that you didn't have to sit through a really long episode. So thanks for sticking around and I'll see you next time.